This video provides a brief overview of your rights while here, rules to follow, and information about your stay while in the Clackamas County Jail. You will also receive a jail inmate manual with more details about your stay here. Tell deputies if you need assistance in reading the manual because of a disability. Let us know the preferred communication methods that work best for you and if you are in need of an ADA accommodation during your stay. You can make a request for an ADA accommodation by using an inmate request form or by asking a staff member in person. Rules and Conduct All inmates are subject to the rules of the Clackamas County Jail and the laws of the state of Oregon. It is your responsibility to know the rules and regulations. Failure to comply with these rules may be cause for further criminal prosecution and or disciplinary action. Always listen and follow the direction of staff. Any issues should be directed to the deputy working your area first and foremost. PREA, Prison Rape Elimination Act. Sexual conduct between any persons in the jail, even if consensual, is not allowed. We will not tolerate any form of sexual misconduct, such as abuse, harassment, or voyeurism. We expect you to report any incidents or suspicions of sexual misconduct. There are several methods to report sexual misconduct. You can submit an inmate request form, tell a staff member, submit a confidential grievance, or use the inmate phone system to make a report. The inmate manual has further information on reporting sexual misconduct. Requests and Grievances. At times, the deputy working your area may require you to fill out a request form or KITE. KITEs are filled out for general inmate requests, medical requests, ADA accommodations, or to file a grievance. These forms are available daily on the tablets in your housing area, or if there's no tablet, you can get a paper form. An answer will be returned electronically. To check answers to your request, you must log in to the tablets using your PIN code given to you prior to being housed in the facility. If you are not satisfied with an answer to any kite or a problem that you experience that cannot be handled at the deputy level, you can submit a grievance. Before filing this grievance, first try to resolve the issue with jail staff. Grievances must be submitted in a timely fashion, which is considered to be within seven days of the event you are wishing to grieve. If you are experiencing an issue of staff misconduct, you have a fear of retaliation or concerns of a health care issue, you may select the grievance as confidential. Outside third parties may make complaints through the Sheriff's Office website. Remember, you should first try to resolve issues with jail staff. Grievances must be submitted within seven days of an event. Grievances may be filed as confidential. What's next? Upon admission to the facility, you will be issued one set of jail clothing and an identification card. Do not destroy or tamper with your clothing or identification card. Doing so will result in criminal or disciplinary action against you for any damages. After receiving your card, you will be assigned a bed in a housing unit. Under no circumstances will you trade or move bed assignments unless told to you by a deputy. A normal day will begin at 6 a.m. and end at 9.30 p.m. At this time, the jail day room lights will go off and you will be required to go to your assigned bunk and remain there. Anytime you leave your cell area, your cell and bed will be left in a neat and orderly manner, ready for inspection. You are required to be fully clothed in uniform, shirt, pants, underwear, and shoes while in the common day room area and anytime you leave your housing unit. Remember, do not tamper with your clothing or ID card. Anytime you leave your cell area must be neat and orderly. You are required to be fully clothed in the common day room and outside your housing unit. Multiple times each day, deputies will perform an official head count. This will consist of being locked down while the deputy working your area goes to each cell and checks your identification cards. During this time, you must remain on or stand next to your assigned bunk and show your identification card to the deputy. Hygiene. All inmates are encouraged to maintain good grooming and sanitation habits. Practice good hand washing before eating and after using the bathroom. Shower when you arrive and at least twice a week. Keep your cell and bed area clean and neat at all times. Sweep and mop your living area when cleaning material are given to you. You will receive one set of clean clothing two times a week. You will receive the cleaned laundry and after changing, give the deputy all dirty laundry to be cleaned. Meal time. You will receive three meals a day at set times posted in your housing areas. At mealtime, you are expected to stand quietly in a single line at the feed port. 
Once the meal is done, all trays will be stacked in an orderly manner and all refuse placed in the proper receptacles. The deputy will count all trays and utensils at the end of the meal to ensure they are all present. Recreation. Recreation time shall be based on your good conduct and cooperation. The opportunity for exercise will be provided on a regular basis. It will be subject to disciplinary needs, temporary security requirements, or unusual circumstances. Telephones. Telephones are located in your housing unit, and they can be used during times when you are not confined to your cell. The phones do not accept incoming calls, but you can call anyone in the United States as long as you have money on your inmate fund account, the receiving party has set up a prepaid account, or the receiving party is willing to pay a collect call service charge. You will be given one free call every 30 days while in custody. Use of the telephones is a privilege and is based upon proper behavior. Mail. You may send and receive correspondence through the U.S. mail, but no mail or notes may be left at the jail for inmates. All incoming mail will be opened and inspected by a deputy for the purpose of security. Visitors. You will be allowed visitors only after you have been in custody more than 72 hours. Visits can occur during the hours and times you are out of your cell. Visiting will be allowed with adults, 18 years of age or older, and immediate family members including children over 12 years of age. Children under 12 must be accompanied by an adult and have proof of relation. Visits will be limited to two 25-minute visits per visiting day. Your visitor must check in 15 minutes prior to the start time for visiting, bring proper photo identification, and dress appropriately. It is your responsibility to inform your visitor of the rules of visiting. Remember, visitation is through video relay sessions. Visitation is allowed with adults and immediate family members, which includes children over 12 years old, accompanied by an adult. Visits are limited to 25 minutes, four times per week. Visitors may find specific information on inmate visitation procedures on the Sheriff's Office website. Medical. Medical services are available to every inmate, regardless of finances. To receive medical care, you must first fill out a medical request describing the problem you are experiencing and provide a short medical history. You will be scheduled to see a provider if applicable. In the event of an emergency, immediately contact the deputy working your area and proper action will be taken. Under Oregon Revised Statute 169.165, the inmate is legally obligated to the Sheriff's Office for the cost of any emergency medical treatment provided while in custody. These bills will be forwarded to you and insurance information should be provided for billing purposes. A nurse will come to each cell twice a day for a medication pass. You are responsible for being fully dressed, having a cup of water and your ID card. You must take the medications immediately in front of the nurse to ensure all medications are taken properly. If you attempt to save or trade your medications, then the medications may be discontinued and you will be subject to disciplinary action. Remember, to receive medical care, you must first fill out a medical request form. Inmates are legally obligated to the Sheriff's Office for the cost of any emergency medical treatment. A nurse will come to each cell twice a day for a medication pass. Mental health. Mental health services are available. The jail provides mental health staff to assist you with concerns. They will then help decide what therapy is appropriate for you. They may also be able to assist with housing or other needs following your release from custody. You can request mental health services by filling out a medical request form. Commissary. The commissary is a privilege and may be purchased from individual funds. This will occur on regularly scheduled days. A list of available items, prices, and purchase limits will be posted in housing areas and on the electronic tablets. An inmate without funds may qualify for an indigent kit. Inmates must fill out the commissary form requesting the indigent kit, which contains hygiene items and writing supplies. Law Library. The jail provides a legal resource areas for inmates to utilize to research their criminal case or the conditions of their confinement. The Law Library has an electronic, up-to-date set of legal material. To use the Law Library, you must fill out an electronic request form and you will be scheduled when time is available. Programs. We have educational and rehabilitation programs available to inmates. These include alcohol and drug programs, cognitive skills programs, general education programs, and religious programs. 
Participation will be recorded by the jail. To participate in one of these programs, fill out a request form. Inmates who substantially disrupt meetings or programs may be banned and subject to disciplinary action. Inmate Worker You must be a minimum or medium custody inmate sentenced to more than 30 days and cleared to work by the jail medical provider to be eligible. Please use a request form to apply to be an inmate worker. This is the end of your introduction to the Clackamas County Jail. For any questions, please refer to your Clackamas County Jail Inmate Manual. If you have any questions that this video or your jail inmate manual did not answer, then ask the deputy working your area. Thank you in advance for your cooperation and good behavior during your stay.